Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Today we're going to be talking about a really special band for me, a personal favorite, and that is Renaissance. And Renaissance quite possibly is playing their very last concert tonight, the, the current, uh, you know, um, lineup of Renaissance, which is different than the classic period. But it looks like Annie Haslam and Renaissance going to be packing it in after tonight's show, uh, their final tour. So I thought this was a really appropriate time to do a history of Renaissance. Uh, I am a really big fan. I have 28 Renaissance albums. I'm going to show them to you. I've seen Renaissance multiple times over the decades, and I'm going to show you the ticket stubs and clippings and programs and things like that. So this should be hopefully a fun video. If you're not familiar with Renaissance, I hope I turn you on. I'm going to show you how to get into them. I have a, a different video on them as well. So if you're not familiar with Renaissance, they originally were an offshoot of the Yardbirds. Um, that was with Jim McCarty and Keith Ralph, who was the lead singer of the Yardbirds, and then Keith's sister, Jane Ralph. And uh, they formed the original lineup of Renaissance. And they did two albums, which I'm really not going to be discussing much about tonight, because it's a really a different band with a completely different sound. Uh, they did an album called Renaissance, um, which was like 1970, and then the second one was called Illusion, and that was in 1971. If you want to experience them, you actually can. This is a pretty cool collection called The Capo, uh, A History of Renaissance. It's a German import, two CDs, but it actually is in chronological order. It's on repertoire, a great label, and there's uh, you got... King and Queen and Island and Love Goes On and uh, those are songs from those first two albums. So you, on this uh, compilation, it's the only one that I think I have where it actually does include tracks from those first two original Renaissance albums. But that's a very, very different band. The Renaissance that we're talking about, this Renaissance with lead singer Annie Haslam, who, by the way, I think has the greatest voice in the history of rock and roll. Uh, I, she's like an opera singer, but not in an annoying way. She just can do it all. And it's she's an unforgettable vocalist, an unforgettable band, amazing band, too. So uh, their first album was in 1972, and that was the album called Prologue, which you have on CD right there. It's got that hypnosis cover. And uh, this is them kind of feeling their way. Prologue, the, the track, is a, an instrumental. Um, I don't think this is one of their best albums. And I'm going to do a ranking at the end uh, for you if you want to try them out. But it's got some good tunes on there for sure. And this is Renaissance's first album called Prologue, which came out in 1972. So you got to start somewhere. And that's where they kind of started. Um, from there, we're going to put these original ones up there. Um, they then did um, their second Renaissance album as this band, which was in 1973. And that is a classic, if you're a Renaissance fan. That's called Ashes of Burning. And there's a vinyl copy of that. There's Annie right there. And that's what the band looked like. And this is really, in my opinion, a big growth from Prologue. And uh, you got some really classic tracks on here. You got Can You Understand? Um, you got Carpet of the Sun, which we'll talk about. But that's a track that everybody should give a shot to because it's one of their shorter songs and an impossible song not to love. At the Harbor is great. But most importantly, it's got the classic title track, one of the most important and famous Renaissance tracks, Ashes of Burning. So that was their second album. Ashes of Burning from 1973. After that, they did what I think is probably their strongest studio record. And here it is on CD. And it's called Turn of the Cards. And this came out in 74. And this, to me, is about as perfect a Renaissance album as you can get. Yeah, this would probably be my number one. And Turn of the Cards is just loads of classic tracks on here. This is an interesting CD version of it, but it's got Running Hard, I Think of You, another great short song that you can check out. 
Things I Don't Understand, Black Flame, Incredible, um, Cold as Being, and Mother Russia. I mean, every song pretty much is a classic if you love Renaissance. I mean, this is as good as it gets. And this was their third, really, uh, official album from the beginning, Turn of the Cards. Just doesn't get much better than that. That's for sure. 1975 sees their next album, Sherazad and Other Stories. Another incredible album. They are really, really, you know, bands, uh, you know, they just hit that sweet spot. And they're really hitting the sweet spot here with uh, Turn of the Cards. Uh, Ashes of Burning, Turn of the Cards, and Sherazad. My God, it, it just is amazing. This is the original CD of that. And this is an incredible album as well. I think it's a little bit below uh, Turn of the Cards. But uh, Trip to the Fair, I know Annie Hassel loves that. To me, that's just okay. Vultures Fly High is a great little rocker. Um, Ocean Gypsy, I Die and Go to Heaven, that's how great Ocean Gypsy is. Blackmore's Night did a great cover of that. And then the whole side two is Song of Scheherazade, which is 25 minutes long and it is perfection um we'll talk more about the live at carnegie hall version but it's just a miracle of songwriting and arrangement and production it's just 25 minutes of pure incredibleness and that is the title track from Shahrazad. now then they released the live record in 1975 and that is their classic Live at Carnegie Hall album. And this is truly live at Carnegie Hall with the Symphony Orchestra. And there is the track listing right there. Prologue, Ocean Gypsy, Can You Understand, Carpet of the Sun, Running Hard, Mother Russia, Sherazad, and the Encore of Ashes Are Burning. This is how I got into Renaissance. So this album came out in 1976. My sister, four years older, had this album, and she had um, Turn of the Cards. And when she got this album, which was her second Renaissance album, I played it constantly as well and just fell in love with this band. Um, the idea of a symphony orchestra and a rock band playing together has always been really appealing to me, but it doesn't work that often. It has never worked better than on that album. Renaissance Live at Carnegie Hall with the symphony orchestra, is literally the greatest example of how a rock band could merge with a symphony orchestra. Why? Because Renaissance is symphonic in their own right. They're incredible musicians, their acoustic bass, you know, uh, their lineup, Mike, Michael Dunford was the guitarist, but he played acoustic guitar. They didn't have an electric guitar player who would play lead. Um, their bass player, John Camp, was one of those kind of British bass players that really fills out the sound, and he's not just playing root notes and melodic bass all over the place. John Tout was a keyboard player, amazing. Terry Sullivan, an incredible drama. They were a symphonic band alone. Mixing them with a symphonic orchestra, wow. Uh, it doesn't get any better than Live at Carnegie Hall. And I have videos which you could check out, um, you know, discographies by topic. And look at my favorite live records. Carnegie Hall is way up there. Uh, that's how great that album is. Next is Novella from 1977. And that's the first Renaissance album that I got when it came out. And I got it on good old Columbia House. Uh, that was uh, my first chance with Columbia House in 1977. 12 albums for a penny. And uh, Novella was one of them. So this is it on CD, of course, and another phenomenal album, Can You Hear Me, classic, Midas Man was a single, uh, Terry Sullivan hitting those tubular bells, to, to accent, he's just, it's emotional, it's so great. Uh, the Captive Heart's okay, and Touch It Once is so hard to keep, another great track. This is a great Renaissance album, and possibly the last really, really great Renaissance album. But uh, that's the first time I saw the band live, which was in 1977. I'm going to show you. I saw them at um, 
the hell? Well, you'll see it. Uh, I will show it in here where it in sort of New York City in a relatively small theater for novella. And my sister took me and it was absolutely amazing. 1978, they released the album A Song for All Seasons. And that is this one. Starting to change their look, although that is apparently not Annie Haslam on the cover. A lot of people think it is. This album, a little bit more of a mixed bag. Um, you know, they really were hit at their prime here. Song for All Seasons got some amazing songs on there. It opens up with Opening Out, which is one of the great opening tracks of any album. And maybe the best opening track on a Renaissance album. It's a great opener, uh, Opening Out. Um, then you get, um, the day of the dream is a great track. They used to play that live closer than yesterday. Kindness at the end back home once again, which was a theme song for a TV show overseas. Um, she is love. Those songs are all these songs are just okay. Opening out's amazing. Then you get Northern lights. Now Northern lights was actually a big hit overseas. That's right. Uh, the, the funny thing about Renaissance, um, I should talk about it, I guess. They only had success in the United States, but not huge success. I'll talk about the charts after. They never had a hit single, anything close to a hit single in the United States. But overseas, Northern Lights actually hit number 10 in the UK, did not chart in America. Uh, the final track on the album is the title track, A Song for All Seasons, and that is a masterpiece. It is as good as as it gets. That's how great A Song for All Season is. That is near the top of greatest Renaissance songs of all time. A true epic. So they still had it in them in 1978 with A Song for All Seasons. Then you come to the next year, and by the way, uh, here's Northern Lights as a 45. This is a picture disc, 45 of Northern Lights, which again hit number 10 in the UK. And opening out the B-side, that amazing opening track from the album as well so we'll stick that right there that's really cool to see and there's a turn of the cards all right let's keep going we're back in 1979 pressures on you know they're not a big selling band renaissance they have pockets of success in america especially the east coast the east coast new york pennsylvania philadelphia other parts of the country virtually unknown and uh, there's some pressure that they really got to try to become more commercial. And it really kind of hits here with uh, Azure Dior, their 1979 album. And this album has got some kind of commercial tracks on there. You got Jekyll and Hines, a good single. Uh, the second track there, The Winter Tree, is a great song. They did actually did a video on that. That should have been a hit. I don't know why. That's just a really great track. Uh, Only Angels Have Wings, Golden Key, Forever Changing. They're good tracks, for sure. Uh, and then you get Side 2, Secret Mission. You get that track there called Kalinda, and that's one of my favorite Renaissance tracks. That's an amazing track. The Discovery is an instrumental, Floods of Lion. It's a fine album, just not at that classic level that you saw on some of these earlier ones. And it's a band that you can kind of sense is doing their best to hang in there. Um, but they just can't. And that's 1979. After that, the band is now in disarray, um, to a certain extent, trying to survive. They come back in 1981 with this album called Camera Camera, and you got a totally different renaissance. Yeah, they cut their hair, they're looking a little bit more... <laughs> punkish 80s ish and a much more kind of modern commercial sound no longer the epic symphonic you know renaissance that we're used to you got annie haslam vocals john camp on bass michael dunford uh, on acoustic guitars and that's it terry sullivan's gone the keyboards of john tout are gone they had peter gosling and peter barron on drums uh peter gosling on keyboards a very different band. I saw them at this time. We'll talk about it. Um, is it terrible? No. But is it Renaissance and their uniqueness is gone? You know, maybe you could kind of compare this to when Genesis changed their sound and became a much more 
commercial success, and of course it worked really well for Genesis, uh, where they lost their uniqueness and just became a great pop rock band. It didn't quite work out for Renaissance, and they had one more album of really original material at that time, which was 1983's Timeline. And boy, they got the puffed up 83 style hair. Look at Annie Haslam. Looking great, but this is not the Renaissance we all knew and love. With that said, some of these songs are pretty fun. They're okay. There's some good tracks. But this is not the Renaissance that we knew and love. And it certainly was not successful for the band. Um, that was really the end of Renaissance as far as new material for a really, really long time until fairly recently when, uh, you know, she started releasing some new material with latter day versions of Renaissance. Um, let's talk about charting, you know, let's talk about charting there, David. Boy, we almost had a collapse. So out of all of this stuff, you know, they were a fairly successful band, like I said, locally, but never a big national band. Um, you know, we talk about like radio today, and I say how terrible it is. FM radio playing the same tracks, and back in the 70s and 80s, certainly the 70s, they had a much wider sound. But the reality is, even then, I never heard, you know, never heard Wishbone Ash ever on the radio, never really heard Renaissance on the radio, even in New York. Back in the 70s, it was really rare. So you'd have to listen to like WNEW and Allison Steele was a legendary DJ and she was called the Nightbird. And she had this great voice and you'd go to sleep to her with headphones on and she would play Renaissance, but it would be, you know, one o'clock in the morning and she would play Renaissance. That was the only way to hear the Renaissance here in New York. Um, out of all their albums, Ashes of Burning charted in the U.S. at number 171. Turn of the Cards, probably their strongest album right there, charted at 94. Scheherazade charted at 46. Carnegie Hall, the legendary live album, charted at 55. Novella charted at 46. Song for All the Seasons in the United States charted at 58. In the UK it hit 35. Because of the top 10 single Northern Lights that fell, David. Azure Dior, that one, charted at 125, and uh, Camera Camera hit a whopping 196. They have never had a top 40 album in the United States, which just blows me away. Here in the New York area, Long Island, they actually headlined Nassau Coliseum, the major arena here that the bands that played Madison Square Garden would play there. Nassau Coliseum hold like 15, 16,000. Uh, Renaissance did headline there once. I don't know how well they sold. I didn't see them there. I stuck to smaller places. So just really a cult band, but one of the most important, impressive, progressive bands of all time when they were in their golden age. Certainly, Ashes of Burning, Turn of the Card, Jeherazade, uh, Live at Carnegie Hall, Novella, maybe parts of Song for All Seasons. It's as good as any classic prog band ever and you just die and go to heaven with their symphonic sound and Andy's vocals now they never stopped um, in fact I'm going to show you something here are the 28 albums that I own by Renaissance now you can see it let me show you the other ones because they have done a fabulous job of releasing their archive stuff so a lot of live records. Here's Live at the Lane, Leah Studios in 1973, and that was a radio broadcast. They finally released that. Uh, how about Live at the Academy of Music in 1974? There are tons of tons of these amazing live shows uh, that they have started releasing on CD. Best amongst them probably these two, which are very similar to Carnegie Hall to a certain extent, because these are King Biscuit Flower Hour, and what you have is live at the Royal Albert Hall with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. They are incredible live with an orchestra. Like I said, probably the best of any band. So you need to hear these if you want to hear 
what Renaissance sounds like live <laughs> with an orchestra, mind-blowing. I never saw them live with an orchestra, unfortunately. But uh, I, uh, based on what I'm listening to, unbelievable. Uh, a lot of compilations as well. There is Tales of a Thousand and One Nights. There's two versions of that. The early years, the later years. These are wonderful, wonderful compilations. So if you go shopping for CDs and you see these, you got to grab these. These are amazing. Really, really well done. Uh, Latter day live Renaissance albums with different lines up in the land of the rising sun. This is a double live one. This is Latter day Renaissance. Not that original classic, but it does have Annie, of course, singing. Some more archive stuff. Here's Day of the Dreamer. This is a live show that they released. Uh, I guess to make money and to survive, they would be releasing these live records every once in a while. Here's Renaissance Live in Chicago. This was a broadcast from a, a little club in Chicago. I remember watching that in 1983. And I think I even recorded it on VHS. They finally released that. Here's British Tour 76. These are officially released. Low budget, but uh, great you know, recordings. I guess they used to really uh, record their stuff for radio. Here's another one, Unplugged, live at the Academy of Music in Philadelphia. And they really work, of course, Unplugged really well because she's such a great singer. And here's a couple of other ones I'll just show you. BBC Renaissance. And these are wonderful collections of BBC recordings. And one other one I'm going to show you. This was an interesting one. This one was... Um, it's called uh, Songs from Renaissance Days, and these are leftover tracks from Latter-day Renaissance that was never released. There's some really fine tracks on there. That, uh, that was a pretty good collection. Now, Annie has released some newer Renaissance albums from the Latter-day Renaissance. Um, I do have uh, some really cool recordings. These are DVD live albums that she has done. That you can pick up here. They play Turn of the Cards and Scheherazade in their entirety. And it's a CD and a DVD. And uh, here's one called The Symphonic Journey with the Renaissance Chamber Orchestra. Again, DVD and CD. And this has uh, some of those newer tracks like Symphony of Light, Grandine, Il Vento. They were latter day, you know, newer Renaissance stuff. Really good for sure. Um, well worth having. Not uh, as good as that classic period. Here's an interesting one called Renaissance Song of Scheherazade, Renaissance Live from two different shows on DVD. So as you can see, I am definitely a big Renaissance fan. And Annie's got a bunch of solo stuff I could show you as well. Let's take a little detour and I'll show you some of the times that I've seen them live. So the first time I ever saw them live was over here. It was one of the first concerts I've ever seen. Maybe like the fourth or fifth concert, sixth concert. And that was Renaissance. I don't know if you can see that. March 23rd, 1978 at the City Center. $7.50. So that was the first time I ever saw them. And that was March of 78. That was really still the November tour. And this is the program that you got when you went there. And they just are really, and they just tore it after all of those years. That's what they look like. A uh, song for all seasons, I guess. There, there's the cover of the album. So I guess it was for that tour. And that's what they look like uh, when you saw them live. And there's the inner that I just tore for you, all you fans. But uh, that was just an extraordinary concert. Of course, I... I knew them so well live, so uh, yeah, I was young, 1978, I was only 15, but I'm telling you, I knew the stuff. The next time I saw them, and this is a cool one, was December 5th, 1981, where is it, right there on that side, and I saw them at Page Hall in Albany, and I had a backstage pass because to make extra money as a college student at SUNY Albany, 
I would do roadie work and uh, security. And I wound up roadieing for Renaissance at that concert. And I helped them with the load in and with the load out. And I got to hang out a little bit with the band, especially Terrence Sullivan, because I helped. They were pretty low budget. And I helped load their equipment in. And I helped Terry Sullivan set up his drum set. Me being a drummer, I told him I'm a drummer. Obviously, nothing like Terry Sullivan, who was an amazing player. But we got to talking, and they shared the same management as Wishbone Ash. We were talking about Wishbone Ash, and they were really, really cool. So that was the first time I met Renaissance. Didn't get any autographs at that time. Here's the next time I saw them, March 12, 1982. And that was at the North Stage Theater, which was a theater for a while up in Glen Cove. You can see it right over there. Here's Renaissance with special guest Ellen... McElwain, and there's the ad. So uh, that was the uh, next time I saw Renaissance. And uh, I guess uh, let's keep going with some more times that I saw them. Because, boy, I've seen them a lot. Let's see what's in this concert book. Uh, all the way in the back. I've seen them five or six times, I guess. Uh, here is another one. This was at a place called the Landmark Theater, and that was uh, October 8th of 2015. So this is one of the latter-day versions of Renaissance, and uh, here's the ticket stub. The ticket was $40, and saw Annie there. She actually signed some of uh, my merchandise, which I have hanging up. She was very uh, graceful and really nice. She was also selling um, artwork, I remember. So that was that performance. And when did I see them? I saw them another time over here. I got a little bookmark here for you. And which one was this one? This was at a place called the Bolton Center in Bayshore, Long Island. This was November 11th of 2018. Right there, there's a Renaissance, and they have a little write-up about them as well. So I've seen Renaissance, uh, what, six times, I guess? So you could definitely say I am a fan for sure. So Renaissance, I believe, playing their final show, maybe ever, tonight. Uh, thank you, Annie, and everybody else for... Your wonderful music over all of these decades. Um, I never understood why they never made it bigger. You know, the best of Renaissance is the best of any progressive rock. Totally unique. And up there with Genesis and Yes and Floyd and Tull. I mean, that short time period of those albums, just extraordinary. And he's released a bunch of solo stuff as well. Um... You know, that album, the Andy Haslam album, there's Blessing in Disguise, there is Still Life, there is the Dream, what is that, Ananda, uh, Alive Under Brazilian Skies, Studio Recording Live from Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of Renaissance, 28 Renaissance albums plus uh, three, six, seven Andy Haslam Solo records. That was her first solo album, Manny in Wonderland. Really cool cover. So just a ton of Renaissance, and that's what it looks like. If you don't know Renaissance, you can go to my playlist. In fact, if you go to, um, you know, discographies by topic, there is a topic called Renaissance's Best Short Songs. So this way you can discover them by listening to Shorter material, which is easier to take in. Here's another one. There's a playlist up there called Spotify Playlist. I've actually done Spotify Playlist where you could listen to the music. And if you go to Spotify Playlist, there is a playlist there for that same video of Renaissance, favorite Renaissance short songs, which uh, is a really easy way to get into Renaissance. And then you can dig into some of these media material. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, and thanks, Renaissance, uh, for all of this great stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Most importantly, check out the music and the legacy of Renaissance. 
because when they are great, it doesn't get much better. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you're new, hit subscribe. Check out my other videos. And I'll see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.